Jeffrey Dahmer was an American serial killer and sex offender, and his name became synonymous with unimaginable horror due to his gruesome crimes. But before we dive into this video, subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy content like this. Now let's begin. Jeffrey Dahmer's life unfolded in a series of disturbing chapters, each darker than the last, leaving a trail of horror and despair in its wake. Born on May 21, 1960, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer was the eldest son of Lionel and Joyce Dahmer. To an outsider, the Dahmer household may have appeared normal, nestled in the quiet suburbs. But behind closed doors, a storm brewed, shaping the mind of a future serial killer. Dahmer's childhood was marked by isolation and disconnection. As a child, he was described as shy and withdrawn, preferring solitude to the company of peers. His fascination with dissecting animals and collecting their bones hinted at a troubled mind from an early age. The discord between his parents, characterized by frequent arguments and eventual divorce, added to the instability of his upbringing. By the time Dahmer reached adolescence, his descent into darkness had begun in earnest. He struggled with social interactions, finding solace in alcohol, and retreating further into his fantasies. His disturbing thoughts took shape in his teenage years, manifesting in violent daydreams and an obsession with control and dominance. In 1978, at the age of 18, Dahmer committed his first murder. His victim was Stephen Hicks, a hitchhiker whom Dahmer lured to his home under the guise of offering him a drink. What started as a seemingly innocuous encounter turned into a brutal act of violence as Dahmer bludgeoned Hicks to death with a dumbbell. The murder marked the beginning of Dahmer's reign of terror, a spree of depravity that would span over a decade. His victims were predominantly young, African-American males, whom he targeted with chilling precision. Dahmer's modus operandi involved luring his victims to his apartment, where he would drug them, strangle them to death, and then engage in acts of necrophilia and dismemberment. Jeffrey Dahmer killed 17 young men between 1978 and 1991. Twelve were killed in his North 25th Street apartment. Three victims were murdered and dismembered at his grandmother's West Alice residence. His first and second victims were murdered at his parents' home in Ohio and at the Ambassador Hotel in Milwaukee, respectively. A total of 14 of Dahmer's victims were from various ethnic minority backgrounds, with nine victims being black. Dahmer was adamant that the race of his victims was incidental to him and that it was the body form of a potential victim that attracted his attention. These contentions have been supported via an independent forensic specialist's study of Dahmer's victim selection, the analysis of which revealed his victims shared a morphological similarity and suggesting Dahmer was psychologically attracted to a certain body type. Most of Dahmer's victims were killed by strangulation after being drugged with sedatives. Four of Dahmer's victims killed in 1991 had holes bored into their skulls through which Dahmer injected hydrochloric acid or, later, boiling water into the frontal lobes in an attempt to induce a permanent, submissive, and unresistant state. June 18th. Stephen Mark Hicks, 18, last seen hitchhiking to a rock concert in Chippewa Lake Park in Bath, Ohio. By Dahmer's admission, Hicks caught his attention because he was bare-chested. He was bludgeoned with a dumbbell and strangled to death with this instrument before being dismembered. November 20th, Stephen Walter Tuomi, 25, killed in a rented room at the Ambassador Hotel in Milwaukee. Dahmer claimed to have no memory of murdering Tuomi, yet stated he must have battered him to death in a drunken stupor. His body was dismembered in the basement of Dahmer's grandmother's house and the remains discarded in the trash. No remains were ever found. January 16th, James Edward Doxtotter, 
2014. Met Dahmer outside a gay bar in Wisconsin. Doc's tater was lured to West Alice on the pretext of earning $1.50 for posing for nude pictures. Dahmer strangled Doc's tater and kept his body in the basement for a week before dismembering him and discarding the remains in the trash. No remains were ever found. March 24th, Richard Guerrero, 22, drugged and strangled in Dahmer's bedroom at West Allis. Dahmer dismembered Guerrero's corpse in the basement, dissolved the flesh in acid, and disposed of the bones in the trash. He bleached and retained the skull for several months before disposing of it. No remains were ever found. March 25th, Anthony Lee Sears, 24. Sears was the last victim to be drugged and strangled at Dahmer's grandmother's residence. He was also the first victim from whom Dahmer permanently retained any body parts. His preserved skull and genitals were found in a filing cabinet at 924 North 25th Street following Dahmer's arrest in 1991. May 20th, Raymond Lamont Smith, also known as Ricky Beeks, 32, the first victim to be killed at Dahmer's North 25th Street apartment. Smith was a male sex worker whom Dahmer encountered at a tavern. Dahmer gave Smith a drink laced with sleeping pills, then strangled him on his kitchen floor. His skull was spray painted and retained. June 14th, Edward Warren Smith, 27, a known acquaintance of Dahmer who was last seen in his company at a party. Dahmer acidified Smith's skeleton. His skull was destroyed unintentionally when placed in the oven in an effort to remove moisture. No remains were ever found. September 2nd, Ernest Marquez Miller, 22. Miller was a dance student whom Dahmer encountered outside a bookstore. According to Dahmer, he was especially attracted to Miller's physique. He was killed by having his carotid artery severed before being dismembered in the bathtub with Dahmer storing his entire skeleton in the bottom drawer of a filing cabinet and his heart, liver, biceps and portions of his thighs in the freezer for later consumption. September 24th, David Courtney Thomas, 22, encountered Dahmer near the Grand Avenue Mall. He was lured to Dahmer's apartment on the promise of money for posing nude. Once a laced drink had rendered Thomas unconscious, Dahmer decided he wasn't my type. Nonetheless, Dahmer strangled Thomas, taking Polaroid photos of the dismemberment process. No remains were ever found. February 18th, Curtis Durrell Strauter, 17. Approached by Dahmer as he waited at a bus stop near Marquette University. Dahmer lured Strotter to his apartment, where he drugged, handcuffed, and strangled him before dismembering his body in the bathtub. He retained Strotter's skull, hands, and genitals. April 7th, Errol Lindsay, 19. The first victim upon whom Dahmer practiced what he later described to investigators as his drilling technique, a procedure in which he drilled holes into the victim's skull through which he injected hydrochloric acid into the brain. According to Dahmer, Lindsay awoke after this practice, after which he was again rendered unconscious with a drink laced with sedatives, then strangled to death. Dahmer flayed Lindsay's body and retained the skin for several weeks. His skull was found following Dahmer's arrest. May 24th, Tony Anthony Hughes, 31. Hughes was lured by Dahmer to his apartment upon the promise of posing nude for photographs. As Hughes was deaf, he and Dahmer communicated using handwritten notes. The injection of hydrochloric acid into Hughes's skull proved fatal. His body was left on Dahmer's bedroom floor for three days before being dismembered, with Dahmer photographing the dismemberment process. His skull was retained and identified from dental records. May 27th, Conorak Synthesomphone, 14. The younger brother of the boy, Dahmer, had assaulted in 1988. 
Synthesomphone was drugged and had hydrochloric acid injected into his brain before Dahmer left him unattended as he left the apartment to purchase beer. When he returned, he discovered Synthesomphone naked and disoriented in the street, with three distressed young women attempting to assist him. When police arrived, Dahmer persuaded they were lovers and that he was simply intoxicated. When police left him with Dahmer in his apartment, Dahmer again injected hydrochloric acid into Synthesomphone's brain, and this proved fatal. His head was retained in the freezer and his body dismembered. June 30th, Matt Cleveland Turner, 20. On June 30th, Dahmer attended the Chicago Pride Parade. At a bus stop, he encountered a 20-year-old named Matt Turner and persuaded him to accompany him to Milwaukee to pose for a photo shoot. Turner was drugged, strangled, and then dismembered in the bathtub. His head and internal organs were put in the freezer and his torso subsequently placed in the 57-gallon drum Dahmer purchased on July 12th. July 5th, Jeremiah Benjamin Weinberger, 23. Met Dahmer at a gay bar in Chicago and agreed to accompany him to Milwaukee for the weekend. Dahmer drilled through Weinberger's skull and injected boiling water into the cavity. He later recalled Weinberger's death to be exceptional, as he was the only victim who died with his eyes open. Weinberger's decapitated body was kept in the bathtub for a week before being dismembered. His torso was placed in the 57-gallon drum. July 15th, Oliver Joseph Lacey, 24. A bodybuilding enthusiast whom Dahmer enticed to his apartment on the promise of money for posing for photographs. Lacey was drugged and strangled with a leather strap before being decapitated, with his head and heart being placed in the refrigerator. His skeleton was retained to adorn one side of the private shrine of skulls and skeletons Dahmer was in the process of creating when arrested one week later. July 19th, Joseph Arthur Braidhoft, 25, Dahmer's last victim. Braidhoft was a father of three children from Minnesota who was looking for work in Milwaukee at the time of his murder. He was left on Dahmer's bed for two days following his murder before, on July 21st, being decapitated. His head was placed in the refrigerator and his torso in the 57-gallon drum. For years, Dahmer's crimes went unnoticed, hidden behind a facade of normalcy and aided by his ability to manipulate those around him. It wasn't until 1991 that his reign of terror came to an end, when one of his intended victims managed to escape and alert the authorities. When police arrived at Dahmer's apartment, they uncovered a house of horrors, with human remains strewn throughout and evidence of unspeakable acts of violence. In 1992, Jeffrey Dahmer stood trial for his crimes, facing charges of murder, necrophilia and dismemberment. Despite attempts to plead insanity, he was found guilty and sentenced to 15 consecutive life terms in prison, totaling 957 years behind bars. Dahmer spent his remaining years at the Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage, Wisconsin, grappling with the enormity of his crimes and the consequences of his actions. Isolated from other inmates and haunted by his past, he spent his days in solitude, reflecting on the darkness that consumed him. 